Hi, welcome back to Freight Waves. Now I'm welcoming Mike Bowden Distel, our uh, CPG expert, uh, the stock out, what have you, all around expert and super cool guy. Welcome to the show there, Michael. How are you, my friend? Hey, good. Good to see you guys. Good to see you too as well. Let's let's jump into what is going on here. Let's start out with Shanghai and what's going on there with the lockdown and its effect on uh, capacity moving. Air cargo we hear about as well, right? But it's going to affect uh, ocean maritime as well, I would imagine, right? Yeah, it's going to be difficult to get products out. I mean, it sounds like they're trying to keep the port open, but everything else is being is, is being shut down. So um, just in terms of getting goods manufactured, goods processed through warehouses, goods sent out, it's uh, going to create some some major issues. I mean, actually, my the first thought I had, well, was 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 sort of, well, at least it's going to you know reduce the congestion at the at the U.S. West Coast ports, which is is it wouldn't be a bad thing. Um, you know, just with there's with so many vessels lined up for for so, for so long, if it cleans some of that up, um, that would be good. I mean, usually there's there's kind of a, a a lull in you know one time of the year or another to. To clean that up, like you know, Chinese New Year, but but that really hasn't happened, um, mm -hmm. you know, this this year. Um, but then, sort of, the second thought was, well, you know, check your watch, look at what time of the year it is, and um, you know, those products are a lot of these summer goods, which tend to be sort of big, bulky goods, kind of lower value, but um, but but things that need to be, you know, hit certain time timelines. And you know, I think a lot of those those goods that are coming in. Um, you know, you'd want to have on shelves by Memorial Day, you know, mm -hmm. things like, you know, things you use for an afternoon at the pool or the, or, or the beach. Um, so it could be a situation sort of like we had last year where you had Halloween costumes arriving in December. I mean, you could have uh, summer goods arrive in October, um, making them not worth very much. Um, so I think that's a, a major concern um, with all these shutdowns. And who knows how impactful that will ultimately be, but it's not like everything was running fluidly uh, to begin with, you know, some shippers are trying to, to route it through the port of Ningbo, but they, they can only, you know, alleviate so so much of, of, of these issues. Um, and, and you sort of look at the sort of impacts on, let's say, intermodal. Well, about 70 percent of the imports that hit the West Coast uh, tend to go intermodal. If these are just delayed and delayed, um, like I was describing, I mean, I think a lot of those are going to go more more truck. I mean, you have seen the truck market in LA, you know, loosen up quite a bit. So, um, you know, I think it's going to be a hit to the, to the intermodal uh, market share there. Yeah, Michael, uh, a question when we talk about this one here, you made a, a point there that I think is worth exploring at least for a moment. Uh, maybe it isn't, but in my mind it is, is, is the fact that, you know, they're trying to keep the port open, right? And even if the port is open, if the manufacturing and shipping to that port in order to get it on a ship isn't moving, does that cause a different type of a bubble or hiccup for us in, in the supply chain? As Laurie Ann LaRocca was showing, what uh, uh, quintupled the, the, the ships now staged out there? Because it doesn't matter if the port is open, if there's nothing to load onto the, onto the ships, what does it matter? Yeah, I think that's exactly right. I mean, I think it's just as, as we've learned, um, you know, all these different parts of the supply chain have to be running in order for for something to be open. It's kind of like the keeping the port of LA Long Beach open twenty four seven. Well, if no one else operates twenty four seven, sort of, what what good does it do? So, yeah, but yeah I completely share your your thought there. And the interesting thing, too, about this is that the Shanghai lockdown is kind of going in a two-phased approach, right? They've got the east side of the city lockdown for this first part, and then they're going to move that to the west side. But that doesn't necessarily extend to the airports, which are still trying to run, and the port, as you mentioned. Zia Robinson has put out this advisory saying, you know, okay, this is what we need to do with our clients. It's now affecting the road transportation, ocean terminals, airports, customs brokerage, all of the like. What do these other groups, maybe the freight forwarders, the 3PLs that are operating in China, just the ports broadly, need to do to kind of get ahead of this? I think they need to just give their customers as much visibility as they have internally. I think that's probably the best thing. I mean, there's there's only, I think, so much they can do um, when big cities in China are, are shutting down and there's there's only so much even if you say that let's say the airports are available but the ocean terminals you know aren't because they're not getting the the, the goods in I mean there's only so much freight that's going to move you know via the airport but I just think probably visibility to the customers is 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 probably the, the best thing that that they can do right now so, Michael, you talked about the, the issue with um, at least trying to get the, the seasonal goods, you know, on the shelves during the actual season 
this year, uh, as opposed to what they've been, you know, dealing with. We're going to see last year's Halloween costumes, I think, in in 2023 or something like that. I don't forget <laughs> what the report is, but um, and, and now it's happening again, or potentially it's happening again, or I guess it really is. This, if but how far back is it, and and how detrimental is this to those businesses? I would imagine they've been trying to get ahead of this game, correct? And, and now are, are they, or, or is this just completely just throw it completely out of whack again? Yeah, I mean, certainly they've been trying to get ahead of it, and I think that's why you've seen inventory levels um, rise in, in, in the way they they have, and a lot of shippers have decided that it's not so important to get the goods into their preferred ports and their preferred, you know, transportation lanes. Just it, the idea was just to get them, you know, into the into the U.S. and then we'll figure it out, you know, after that. And I think some uh, companies have done that and have had, you know, have have a lot in inventory and and, and others don't. Um, but the the, the the a lot of the seasonal stuff is 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 really where the the issue is. So I so I, th I think it's a little bit on a case by case basis. Um, but but still, I think uh, th this the. You know, so a lot of these goods, it's it's almost like food. I mean, it's just it's just not worth very much if it doesn't hit the right, um, right. right season. Mike, let's touch on our second topic today. This now emerging thesis that an oversupply trucking market is existing. What that kind of means for CPG and intermodal. Starting off with this, can you talk what people are meaning when they say this oversupplied trucking market? Sure. So, you know, the last, you know, let's say year and a half, I mean, really, it's been, uh, you know, very t the trucking market's been very tight. I mean, pr you know, prices have, have, be have been rising sharply, you know, contract rates have been up double digits, spot rates have been, have been very high. I mean, really, there's, there's been lots of demand and not enough supply. Um, but we're seeing that change with, uh, you know, the, the data where carriers are rejecting fewer loads. Um, demand is down, likely because just consumers are consuming less with inflation and a lot of the inventory um, you know levels have have risen to a point where a lot of that inventory is in place which you know really replenishing inventory drives a lot of the the freight demand and then on the supply side like Thomas Watson was uh, showing a moment ago there's been a lot of of carriers um, coming into the marketplace trying to chase the the, the, the high rates um, but of course those high rates might not you know stick around for much uh, longer so they're probably um, sort of late to the party yeah, they definitely are. Does this does this help those CPG uh, and and others that are uh, having issues with their supply chain? Does the does the the kind of the slowdown in Shanghai and the in the if you want to call it a glut or whatever of the of the operating authorities and the in the uh, loosening, I guess, of capacity? Does that ease kind of the pressure and their ability to get things moved and where they need to be on on those shelves, or uh, have they just not stocked enough? I, I think it does. I think this is a benefit for, for, for CPGs. And if I was a CPG company um, managing my transportation, I would start to get more aggressive right now in terms of uh, negotiations mm -hmm. with carriers, um, you, you know, because, I mean, CPGs have some of the best freight. I mean, they, they have, a, you know, it's, it tends to be stable. It tends not to be what um, consumers cut back on. And, um, you know, a lot of these companies have had to Use more more spot um, spot freight, um, but but I, I think they're they're really sort of in the in, in sort of the driver's seat when it comes to this maybe this next upcoming round of, of, of negotiations. I mean, better better than they than they were because you know carriers are gonna you know are, are seeing these um, these data points too, and they want to have a more stable freight base, and and CPGs are one way uh, to to do that. Yeah, so it's a kind of a positive thing, or at least it lends you towards a positive kind of nature or thought process if you're a CPG guy. How does this um, start to interact with, with intermodal? You're a big intermodal guy as, as, as well, Mike. You're quite knowledgeable there. How do you see this impacting that? So I think initially a little bit of a slowdown in consumer demand could be a positive for intermodal. I mean, in the last year, we've seen such um, you know such issues with congestion, you know, add in near um, terminals um, and shortages of equipment, you know, containers and chassis, you know, places, not enough places to put, you know, the boxes. And, you know, last year, I mean, plenty of demand, but we were still seeing domestic intermodal volumes down double digits in that, in that third quarter um, for most of the third quarter. So, you know, initially a little bit less demand, I think gives um, you know, companies a, a chance to, you know, turn those containers faster, the domestic intermodal companies turn those containers faster and have a little bit more uh, fluid product offering to make it a more truck-like 
service. And at least so far, we've seen intermodal volumes, um, at least domestic intermodal volumes, hold up well, even though the demand for, for, for trucking has come down um, pretty sharply in, in, the, in the last month. So I think initially it could actually be a little bit of a benefit. Now, you know, as time goes on, there's no way to hide from the fact that, you know, same thing that's moved in uh, drive vans is moved in intermodal containers. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if the consumer really retrenches, well, then that's less demand for, for intermodal and, and, and ultimately a bad thing. Mike, before we let you go really quickly, I want to talk a little bit about this oversupply in trucking and what this can mean for inflation when it comes to the CPG goods, especially as those CPG companies, as you mentioned, kind of have the upper hand when it comes to their transportation spend. Can you touch a little bit on if this now maybe softening of the market could bring down some of that inflationary pain that we've been seeing? Yeah, I think it does, but you do have to put this in context of what a CPG company is looking at, which, you know, about 45, 50% of their cost of sales is ingredients. And then some of the other big components are labor and packaging and contract manufacturing. So all those things are rising. And then we look at their, their transportation spend, it's about 9%, eight, nine, 10%. So, so not too different than, you know, transportation and logistics as a percentage of the U S economy. Um, so I think it, it takes the edge off of that particular inflationary pressure. Now, if there is less, um, demand for CPG, then I think that helps them with on the contract manufacturing side. They can get rid of that very expensive contract manufacturing, mm. bring that more in-house. So both of those things can help margins, but they're still facing all, all kinds of pressure on, on ingredients, packaging, labor costs. So it's, it's not like CPG companies are out of the woods on inflation. Right. All right, Mike. Well, thank you for being with us today. It's great to have you as always. We'll catch your show the stock out later this afternoon as well. And we'll talk to you next week. Okay. See you later.